Okay, hi, I'm Dar with the Elite Technology Report. Today we're going to have a look at a Rudge out, uh, Edge Router X. That's this guy here. Now, what I like about this is it's readily available. It comes in at great price, enterprise ready, and it supports OpenVPN, though not through the uh, web GUI. We have to get into the console. So we're going to connect this and the tunnel to PFSense. Now, PFSense is another... Uh, router and what I like about it is it can be easily virtualized it's open source it's enterprise grade and so I can take a um um, a server in a data center uh, that's virtualized under Hyper-V or VMware or um, any of the other Citrix um, uh, virtualization install PFSense and then um, also what I like about OpenVPN is it's easily configured uh, so the client, which would be in this case this one sitting at the uh, the uh, end user's location, doesn't have to have a static IP address. Uh, and so we can use a non-stack IP address with a readily available, uh, inexpensive uh, commercial grade router and connect into a data center. So that's what we're going to show today. Uh, but before we do, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's this one here, uh, youtube.com slash Helia Canada. And if you're interested in this device or other devices like it, uh, check out our online store at buyphonesonline.ca for Canada. That's buyphonesonline.ca for Canada. Now, without further ado, let's jump in and see how this is done. Okay, so here's our edge router device. This one's been factory reset. Uh, I've got Ethernet zero, and so that's where I need to plug in my laptop to, for initial configuration. And we've got, of course, Ethernet, um, Ethernet zero, Ethernet one through uh, four. Okay, so we're gonna plug. We plugged in there. Next thing we need to do is we need to make sure uh, there's no DHCP on this uh, out of the box. So uh, we need to. Go into our Ethernet properties of our uh, network card, IP4, set a static IP address. So uh, the IP address of the device is 192.168.1.1. I've set my IP address 192.168.1.4. Okay, and then OK and OK. And once we've done that and the network cable is plugged in, we should be able to access the device. Now, the username is UBNT. Same with the password, UBNT. And that gets us in. Now, first thing you want to do is definitely upgrade uh, the firmware. Now, I'm not going to do that, uh, but there is uh, pretty regular firmware upgrades. Now, when you get in, it will ask you about the basic setup wizard. So we're going to say yes. And you can see here, ETH Internet is going to be ETH, F, uh, Ethernet 0. Uh, we're going to use one LAN, which means the other ports are switched. And... Okay, this this is super important. So the address that shows up here is 192.168.1.1. Now, when we're working with VPNs and tunnels and connecting networks together, no one network can have the same uh, IP range as any other network. So we can't have a 192.168.1.1 here and um, also in the server or on the other end of the VPN or at another site that might be connected to it. So I recommend right off the bat, get rid of these uh, this IP address always. If you see a 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.0.1 network address, change it. I mean, it's going to cause disruption for your network, so know, know that. you got to refresh everybody's IP address so it, they're on the new range, but uh, long term, if you're going to be doing some advanced networking, that's a, a pretty important thing to do. So I'm changing uh, this one to 3.1. Uh, now, also, you should use a strong password, and you should probably change the user here, but because this is a demo, I'm going to you leave it as UBNT and UBNT, uh, but definitely use a strong uh, password. So we're going to go apply changes, we're going to reboot, and yes, I'm sure. Now, I find that this reboot process is a little bit long, so we're going to pause the video, but before that, uh, we need to change our cables here. So we said that uh, F0 is going to be the WAN, and my laptop or the, the uh, local network is going to be F1. So we're going to go plug that in there. 
Uh, I'm going to grab my um, WAN connection, which happens to be uh, a local address as well. Um, so there we go. We've got two plugged in there. Now, next thing we need to do is go back into my Ethernet uh, network card settings on my computer. So let's bring that up. Here we go. And we're going to go back to this and properties and change it to automatic because the adapter um, that we just configured now has DHCP installed. Now, let me get my command prompt up here. Here we go. IP config. And uh, it hasn't given me a new IP address. So we're going to pause. And then uh, once this thing is fully rebooted, we will be back um, to look at this. Okay, so um, what I did is I actually disabled my um, Ethernet adapter here. Uh, I disabled this and then re-enabled it, and that seemed to expedite. And uh, now that I've done that, uh, you can see I've got 3.38. So I should be able to go back up here now, 192.168.3.1. And, uh, of course, right, certificate is not validated. That's fine. UBNT. Now, this is we did change the password in the last step. Uh, so it should not be UBNT and UBNT for you. You should be using a strong password and a different username okay so here we have our ethernet uh addresses um you can everything is pretty standard here uh this is where we need to do our next step so um let me show you we got a couple tools that we need to use the first one is putty so putty is free you can download it on the internet uh, make sure you get one from the original site. This is what PuTTY looks like. So uh, we are going to 192.168.3.1, uh, port 22, and this is going to give us console access. Now there is also a CLI console up here as well. Um, either way, um, this is probably a little bit simpler if you click on this. There we have a console, uh, but I also get it up here. So either or. Um, I'm, uh, I'm an old dog that likes, um, doing things, um, one way. And so I'm using putty. Okay. So there's a couple things we need to do here. Uh, there is a console or a config directory. You can see there we've got eight files. We need to put our VPN config in here. So to do that, I'm going to use an op uh, another uh, tool. This is FileZilla, again, uh, free to download. And we are going to go in, connect to the router here, 192.168.3.1, using the SFTP protocol. I'm using my username and password that we set up. And we are going to load. Now, um, I have access to the file tree now in here. So I want to click on config. This is the config uh, file that or folder we just looked at through PuTTY. And this happens to be my old VPN file. Now I'm going to go back and show you how I created this file. But for right now, we are going to go in and we're just going to drag it over to copy it. Now if I go back to open VPN, repeat that command, you can see now um, here is the file. Okay, now, next step, where do I get this file from? That uh, comes from PFSense, and it gets auto-generated, which is super nice. Uh, here is my VPN, uh, open VPN. So this is PFSense. Uh, you're going to want to uh, upload a package. So if we go in here and go into system and package manager you're going to want to install well let's have a, a quick look at this okay i've got a few things installed here but this is the one we need open vpn client export so make sure you install that now uh let us go back here so this is my um file 
this is my open VPN that we're connecting to and this is what we need to set up to uh, start uh, generating that file so uh, this is a remote access there's different choices here we're using remote access I find that's working best with the edge router uh, the WAN interface of the PFSense router is uh, where we're connecting to the local port by default it's 1194 but every single um, tunnel needs to have its own port so if you got multiple ports or multiple open VPN tunnels uh, running as a server on the device then you need to have different ports for each one okay description is pretty easy it's going to generate a key for you uh, I'm not going to scroll down it's much longer but of course that's insecure uh, so it's only showing the first line there uh, we do have to create some certificates so um, you're going to have you want to want to create a certificate authority on uh, PFSense and generate both a server certificate and a user certificate and so there's lots of videos about setting up the server certificate on the on, on YouTube so check those out I'm not going to go into it but you do want to select this and this is the certificate authority on this PFSense box and then we've created a server certificate uh, for use with this VPN tunnel and so that's what you see here uh, and then uh, we are going to well, the rest of this is fairly standard, uh, fairly standard, fairly standard. Okay, so, um, goodness, there was some, no crypto, okay, that's fine. I'm looking for compression settings, uh, but we can cover that uh, afterwards. I've got no crypto acceleration here, even though I do have this, so um, either way. Uh, now this is super important so there is an intermediary uh, tunnel uh, for use with uh, OpenVPN and so uh, your one site connects to the intermediary tunnel and then from the intermediary tunnel it connects to the, your endpoint your other network and so this has to be unique you can make it up um, I use this weird weird range because um, uh, generally it's I'm not going to run into it it's like the 192.168.1.1 uh, I can't put it here because that's very common and if two networks are are using the same it, it's just not going to work so uh, feel free to use this or a similar uh, range like that it just has to be different I don't uh, use IP6 I know it's finally becoming more common uh, this is my internal uh, or my network I'm connecting to on the server side so those are the the IP range that it will have access to okay here's the compression setting I was going to mention so this is what's recommended now this disable compression and use packet framing compress uh, you can play there's I mean there's lots of options but I would stick with this one um, it definitely works uh, okay and then last here I like putting these in here so when the tunnel um, gets generated or initializes it's going to push a route on to, on PFSense and of course this 192.168.3.1 is the network that we configured on uh, the edge router um, so you're going to want to push whatever uh, network address you're going to use there and then IP4 and whatever, whatever. So we're going to click save on this. Um, I'm going to have to hide all of my screen here from you all. And then on client export, which of course is that additional package we installed within PFSense, I've only got one here and that's our port 1204 um, that we created. Okay, so pretty common stuff here down 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 uh, additional configuration options so I, I recommend that you put in here push routes um, and so this is the route that's going to get generated um, um, when it connects uh, when the client when the edge router uh, connects to the tunnel the route that should be added to the edge router um, routing tables so in this case it's 10.100.90.0 and then 255, 255, 255, And now this is the important part down here. So uh, OpenVPN tunnels, we're gonna generate a inline configuration. So that's this first button here, 
most clients. And there's our file down. Now this is the file that I copied onto the Edge router with FileZilla. So that's where you get that OVPN file. All right, so uh, we're gonna jump back into Putty here. Now I've got a bunch of these settings. I've got a bunch of these settings on our blog, Business Phones Calgary. Okay, now of course we haven't configured this, so um, that's why I can't. I'm going to uh, bring up a second internet connection so I can actually uh, show you where the settings, where you can find them. Okay, silly me, it was uh, my network cable was uh, not plugged in all the way. So here we go, configuring a tunnel between Edge Router and PFSense. If there's updates, it, you will find them here. But here is the uh, config that we need to do. So that's what we're going to type in here. Okay, so first thing we need to get into. Um, so I, I recommend you do this LS config here so you have the exact name of the file. And then uh, what we're going to do is configure to get into config mode. And then we're going to create the OpenVPN uh, interface. And this is router UDP4. Now this is not Windows, so uh, it is case sensitive. You have to get all your capitalization uh, correct. Okay, so we're going to commit that. Now that's going to create uh, the interface. And then set service NAT rule 5020 description. And this is a masquerade for a tunnel. Okay, this is the wrong quote. And then set service NAT rule 5020 outbound interface VTON 0. And next set service NAT rule 5020 type masquerade. Set service NAT rule 5020 protocol all. And commit and save okay so there we have okay um so now what we need to do let's have a look at our interface it's going to say that there is a configuration change so we're going to refresh okay let's click close this what you notice is there's a new vton interface in there uh if we go into firewall and then the nat there's our masquerade for tunnel uh, which is awesome and if we bring up our um, command prompt on Windows here I can go and I can ping of course the interface 192.168.3.1 which is my edge router I can ping um, 8888 which is Google and then I can also ping uh, the other side of the network um, or the other side of the tunnel which is this so that is awesome. I got a dynamic IP. I've got a device that auto connects whenever it's powered up. Uh, it's inexpensive. It's readily available and it just works. Okay, so that was how to configure an edge router. Uh, of course, this device here with uh, you, uh, a PFSense firewall uh, using uh, OpenVPN for the talent between the two. You can find other great videos on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Helia Canada. Uh, and please subscribe. Or if you're looking for some awesome, cool devices that we use uh, professionally every day, uh, you can check out our online store at buy phonesonline.ca for Canada. That's buy phones online. Uh, and create an account because we got great discounts, but you have to have an account to see the special pricing. I'm Dar with the Healy Technology Report. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.